uh, just to really kind of, um, so I'll be trying to, what I'll try and do today is, is, is sort of, uh, as you said, set the scene, um, uh, not just on the road safety side, but actually the context at which the road safety operates within the, the department and its wider priorities, and just to kind of reinforce the point that it's not just about uh, obviously saving lives and preventing injuries on the road, which um, of course we want to do, but also re recognising the wider impact of, of road safety. And actually that's one another reason, many other reasons why we need to kind of have a new approach, which is what the whole kind of aim of today is. So as David alluded, you know, the, the Minister has talked about the fact that we are developing a long-term uh, road safety strategy, uh, which we hope to be UK-wide. Uh, and I think uh, we're really interested to hear from you today about some of the ideas you have for how we can kind of change change, change the formula that, that, and think about what it is that might actually kind of have a real impact and, and change the, the trajectory, um, which we know has just not been coming down as fast as we, as we want it to. Um, so uh, next slide, please. I'm going to be like Chris Whitty. Uh, bring up the first first um first graph. So uh, as as we said, you know we've we had a really we've had a long standing trend of of improvement of safety on our roads, um, uh, which has really sort of been progressively improving since 1979. Um, uh, but since 2010, we have seen this sort of flat flat more flat profile where the number of death and serious injuries has kind of stayed relatively stable, and that's not really what we want to see. Now we have seen a slight um, uh, reduction over the last year uh, due to the pandemic but actually our initial statistics are showing that, that basically was in line with the fact that traffic levels dropped uh, and therefore when traffic levels return I'm afraid we expect that actually the number of deaths on the road will return as well so um, uh, uh, whilst the pandemic kind of gave us a bit of kind of a short short relief uh, I don't it, it doesn't it hasn't really changed the fundamental uh, issues and I think that's something we know are kind of much more entrenched and, and, and deeply felt. Um, next graph, please. So uh, in some ways you're like, well, that would be not, not okay, it's never okay, but you know, if that was uh, the same everywhere, then I think we would sort of go, well, you know, maybe this is part of the kind of something deeper, even deeper kind of global, but actually we have seen countries, some countries make some progress uh, over that time. So whilst, as, as David said, we're very proud that the UK is kind of world leading in this, uh, we, we don't want to have any complacency and I think uh, we want to learn as well from other countries and uh, share our experiences uh, about what, 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 is, what is part of this formula to make us kind of really make those improvements on road safety. Um, okay, next slide please. Um, now one of the things I wanted just to, to point out as I mentioned at the beginning is that we know that it's not just about the terrible impact it has on the individuals and their families who are affected um, by death and serious um, injury on the roads. Um, it, 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 that obviously for those it is a catastrophic, terrible, terrible event, um, but for, it also has a much wider impact. Um, so for example, on the health service, we know that the costs are around 1.7 billion. Uh, next one. Uh, for policing, uh, we think it's around another 0.5 billion. And then thirdly for justice, uh, we think it's another 2.5 billion and that doesn't capture in addition to that the impact uh, on congestion where which obviously collisions cause um, and also just the wider economic uh, cost of those people no longer working um, uh, the, the impact on the businesses that are affected so we think that the economic costs are really really significant and that's one of the things over the last few years we've really been able to kind of uh, hone uh, our understanding of that which we think is, you know, in the in the tens of billions. So it's, it, I think the thing really here is, is that we really understand that this isn't just about as individual deaths. And I think that's why uh, we make sure that road safety is part of the kind of wider strategic thinking within the department. So if we go on to the next slide, uh, the other things that we also know it has an impact on is uh, on active travel. So uh, we really want more people to be walking and cycling, not just for um, congestion and health benefits, but also for their uh, for, for, for decarbonisation as well. Uh, and we know that safety is one of the real concerns that prevents some people from taking part. Uh, we also think about the decarbonisation benefits that all of that has. So not just on the kind of collision side, but actually if we don't get more people doing active travel and making less car trips, um, that, that has a real kind of impact on our, our really ambition uh, on carbon. And you'll have seen many of you that uh, uh, this week uh, we announced the, the new um, transport decarbonisation plan, which has some really ambitious uh, work uh, that we're doing across all modes uh, to reduce to get to net zero and that you know is really significant and that transition particularly to uh, you know electric uh, vehicles which is happening very much you know and I think for anyone 
out there who do, even just watches the television will see that you know the car adverts now are all about uh, electric and we have started to really see that kind of turn over the last year or so towards electric vehicles um, and other kind of low carbon uh, approaches um, but we know there's still a really long way to go particularly when we get to the kind of HGV end of that um, for the larger vehicles so there's a lot to do there but I think road safety is, is absolutely has to go hand in hand I think we can uh, and, and can contribute a lot um, to this, particularly on the road safety on, on sort of collision side where collisions obviously make uh, cause more traffic and therefore kind of more emissions. Uh, one more. And I think lastly, we looked, at, we're, we're very conscious that road safety aligns very strongly with the levelling up agenda um, because uh, we know that those areas, you see worse road safety in, in areas that are more deprived. Um, so I think we're very alive to the fact that any sort of improvements that we see to, to achieve levelling up need to, should, should have, again, go hand in hand with improvements in road safety, uh, which both reinforce economic uh, improve economic growth but also kind of if you don't do it it detracts from that growth um so uh i think we see that road safety can contribute not just obviously as i said to those immediate uh, deaths and injuries but actually to a much wider kind of agenda which is very alive for for our, our, this government uh, next one so uh the uh, the department published uh, again this week the uh, outcome delivery plan which is a i confess not the most kind of sexy sounding title but actually what it's um trying to uh cover is is kind of basically what are the strategic priorities for the department and all, all departments have been asked to do this um but again i just wanted to highlight that because it's worth having a look at but it also to, to just reinforce the fact that road safety kind of like 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 rock through like words through the brighton rock you know every everywhere you go through road safety actually uh, contributes. So one of the things that commits us uh, to, to doing is kind of improving connectivity, uh, including that's including levelling up by enhancing transport network on time and on budget. So that's kind of improving infrastructure uh, and improving the, the, the connections uh, between different modes. And next one. Uh, building confidence. So this is about creating a transport network as the country recovers from COVID that um, is improving transport for the user. And we really want to kind of continue to better understand their experiences and ensuring that the network is safe, reliable and inclusive. And I think this is probably the area where road safety sits most strongly, but as I said, it connects to all of them. Uh, the third one is about tackling uh, climate change. We've talked a bit about that, but I think this, this is a huge uh, challenge, uh, not just for uh, transport, but across the economy, but we will be playing our part and road safety links strongly to that. And lastly, uh, I want to talk about kind of increasing our global impact uh, as we kind of remove from having left the European Union um, as I said, I was really pleased to attend the uh, road safety, the International Road Safety Conference that we held two years ago, um, and uh, which was a really, really great event. And it reinforced not only that we all face this common challenge, um, uh, some people, and, and that we need to kind of share that best practice and experiences so that we have an ideas exchange um, that we learn from those countries that have kind of been successful because everyone has unique, uh, every country has a unique environment that it's operating in and, and a particular dynamics that it's responding to whether it's kind of fact that it's predominantly rural or uh, predominantly urban that they've got a younger population that they've got different kind of vehicles uh, so uh, and actually but it, almost everywhere in the world there's someone who's facing the same challenge uh, so whilst as David said Europe is is very successful on road safety we've also got a lot of other things that have kind of developed over time um, but I think we, we want to learn and, and support countries across the world to tackle road safety. It's the kind of number one killer in a number of developing countries. And that is, is, is something that, you know, so often isn't really remembered um, when we look at kind of some of the international development concerns. So I think something it's something we really want to remain really committed to. And I'm really glad today that we've got some people from kind of different parts of the world. And actually operating virtually in some ways gives us that opportunity, although we don't get to be in Lancaster House, which is particularly lovely. Uh, so. Um, uh, I remember that very well. We had a lovely day um, there. Uh, so let me keep going though. So what, let's talk a bit about what we have done. So the last two years, two years ago in 2019, we were really pleased to publish the road safety statement. Um, and this was a kind of two year plan to really, uh, to, to, to do not only a series of actions that actually improve road safety, but to kind of really improve our research and our understanding of what um, has been uh, the kind of underlying causes of, of, of poor areas of poor road safety. And what we and what are the sort of measures and trying to understand the measures better now we've been able to make a lot of progress we have been slightly hampered by by the pandemic which has obviously just affected the government resources and also delivery of some of that research so for example driver 2020 you know we just not some things we've just not been able to do because people haven't for example been able to do driving tests and the like 
um, but we have been able to make some real progress. So of the 74 actions, uh, 41 have been completed and all of them are, are subject minus two are, are kind of underway and are still active. Um, so just to give a flavour of some of the things that we've been doing, um, we've been funding uh, the Good Egg Safety um, campaign, which is helping kind of retailers make sure that people buy appropriate car seats and, and in, uh, install them correctly, which is a really important thing for saving young lives. Um, we funded Break, uh, which has obviously been doing important work in uh, teaching about safe and healthy mobility in schools. Um, uh, we've done the interim findings for Drive 2020, although as I said, you know, we have had delivering that has been sort of problematic. Um, uh, we've been funding Rospa to do more um, to help with kind of uh, providing a dedicated website and information in doctor surgeries. So I'm not going to see the whole list. You can see the list. It's, it's there. But just say we have been making real progress. But as I said, we, we always knew that this two years was really about building up to doing something a bit more um, long term and, and more uh, strategic. And that's what we're working on now. And so I just wanted to kind of say, uh, bring on the next the next animation. Now, such in my team, some of you may may or may or not know. Uh, uh, I have to say, I didn't recognise this, but he has explained it to me, and it's an Alice in Wonderland reference. So, for those of you who are Alice in Wonderland fans, you might understand this. I confess, I've never read it, which is a, uh, uh, something I probably shouldn't say. But um, uh, I've watched. I'm, I'm sure I've watched. I've watched. I've watched lots of television related to it, but this is one of the references that passed me by. But the basic principle is that you um, you have to to stay still. You have to keep moving. Uh, to, to, if, if you sorry, if you stay still, you will stay still. But if you keep, you sometimes have to run twice as fast to keep moving. Um, we know that there's some. We have to be more creative. We have to look differently at this problem. Try and kind of uh, see that trend change. And so I'm really kind of I'm really pleased that you were all able to be here today. And that um, when when we have those workshops, I would really encourage you to uh, not hold back. Think think of the, all those ideas that um, you you've maybe held on to, or you feel that maybe we. We, we, we did before, but maybe we haven't done as much. Um, and let's put everything on the table, because I think we know that to do a strategy, you've got to start big and, and, and start ambitious. And then sometimes you aren't able to deliver everything. But at least if you start ambitious, you, that's where, where you can um, you can then have the best ideas. Uh, and, and I think if we if we kind of all put our heads together, I think we can have some really uh, positive ideas come forward that maybe are things that we haven't done before. Um, uh, even though you know this is a really well-established field, and we, we have, we, you know, we, we know our evidence really well, but we, we're always keen to learn and to, to 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 do more. So at that point, I think I was going to uh, uh, hand back to David, but I just want to say I'm sorry I'm not going to be able to be there for the rest of the day. As I said, Baroness Beer will be joining later. There will be members of the DFT team with you all day. Um, I'm sure at some point they can make themselves visible. Um, but I just wanted to kind of really reinforce how pleased we are that. Organise this event today and how what a positive contribution it will.